Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, apologize for the delay. Uh, it's a problem with the camera. So let's begin this time with a word of prayer and then we'll get into our session. Father, we thank you once again for yet another day to just be in your presence. We thank you for this opportunity to learn and grow, oh God. And even as we learn, oh Father, we pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bring clarity, direction, you give us wisdom, discernment to. And Lord, that everything that we learn, oh God, it would be rooted in our hearts, in our spirit, oh God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, everyone can hear me okay? Uh, online students? Okay, hold on. Uh, all right. Great. Okay, so um, with last class, we did the teacher in the early church right and we look at how uh, you know we looked at quite a few points so we stopped at the point where we begin with you know teach with the wisdom of the spirit is that where we stopped ensure sound doctrine okay all right so last class we looked at uh, the teacher in the early church we looked at how the ministry of the teacher uh, we saw Jesus as the example, and in the early church, there were rise of many teachers, right? And we look, we also looked at the instructions that we see here that every believer was teaching. It was not like people were going through, you know, a certain course and then you become a teacher. Everyone were teaching, right? Of course, now we have things have changed, right? We, if we want to teach, we have to learn, we have to prepare ourselves. Uh, then you have the ministry gift of teaching. So there were people who were gifted in this area of teaching. Very importantly, we looked at do and then teach. So don't teach and not do. Do and teach, right? Uh, do not teach the commandments of men. That means uh, uh, when, when, you're, when, you, when we are teaching, don't go by what we feel like always go by the word don't come up with you know your own doctrines own ideologies right now that's what happened in in matthew 15 you know jesus is telling they are the the pharisees they are going by the law they're trying to do things what you know the the pharisees they're trying to do things in order to please god they're following the commandments of men and they're forgetting about you know why the commandments are even there it's for God, that our lives be turned to God. And then we looked at uh, uh, the commandment of go teach in all nations. Yes, so go teach all nations all things. Uh, very importantly, we looked at the Holy Spirit is our teacher. Now, especially in, in when it comes to ministry, uh, of course, the Holy Spirit is, can teach us anything, right? In the Old Testament, he taught Bezalel and Obiel in the Old Testament how to make the high priestly garments, right? So God is not like, okay, only for ministry, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. No. So we can depend on the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to teach us, uh, to help us to, you know, especially when we go into scriptures, there are times when we don't know what we may not understand, but he gives us the wisdom. He's our teacher, right? Uh, and then each with the wisdom of the spirit. Paul is writing in 1 Corinthians 2. He says, listen, I did not come to you with the wisdom of man. I did not come to you with all my intellect, all that I learned under Gamaliel, all that I learned under the law. And I did not come to you even by the, you know, visions that I saw and my encounter with Jesus. No, I came to you with one thing, in the wisdom and the power of the Holy Spirit. And what did I do? I did not preach anything else but the cross. Now, think of this. Paul had many things to talk about. Yeah, he could have said, listen, all of us, we are having Bible study today. And then he could have shared all that happened in his life, how he grew up, how he grew up under the law, how he encountered Jesus, how what he did in Arabia, 
you know, uh, what did he do in the desert? What did he do in Tarsus? How was he able to, you know, how, you know go, the Bible says, Paul writes and he says, I was caught up into the third heavens. There's so much he could talk about, but he says, I didn't, I don't want to talk about all of that. Lest the wisdom of the cross, the cross of Christ be left of its power. Right? So it's a very important lesson for us. Even as we teach, we teach with the wisdom of God. You know, recently somebody sent me a clip. I, I forget who it is, but uh, you know, a lot of our folks send us, you know, these clips and ask what. And in this clip, uh, this this pastor is is preaching. Right? Again, a huge, massive uh, church. Uh, you know, and. This is strange. I've never heard of this person, but anyways, he has, you know, he 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 gets some cream and some, you know, honey and some syrup and all these things, and he's he's getting food. He's throwing it on on in places. He's spraying syrup on the Bible and the Lord's table, and then he's saying, like he ended the whole thing saying, "We are." Uh, we are the temple of God. This is not the temple. Something like that. It didn't make sense at all. Now think of this. There are thousands of people watching this pastor. Massive church. Huge following. Mega church. Right? And people are listening to this. Now, when God gives us a responsibility, preaching and teaching the word of God is not something small. It's a huge task. It's a responsibility that God is giving you and me. It could be, you know, uh, as Bible college students, you'll have the morning time of uh, you know, worship and preparation of the word. You got to prepare. Because what are you doing? You're not ministering just something. You're ministering the word of God. right? So teach with the wisdom of the spirit. Tap into that wisdom. Say, God, I'm not able to grasp certain things. Give me the wisdom. Help me to understand. Or, God, you you give me, lead me to a person or a book that can help me to understand. Right. Now, let me give you this example. I was reading many years back. This happened many, many years back. I was reading about uh, uh, Israel, right? And I was reading about portions of Israel where you know, uh, so it was, I was reading about ancient Israel, right? And as I was reading, something in my heart said, why don't you go to certain pictures, right? And so I started looking at pictures of ancient Israel. This is, I think, 2015 somewhere. And as I was looking at these pictures, and I thought to myself, it was, you know, it's all just empty, dry land. Nothing is there, right? It's just emptiness. And of course, ancient Israel would have had different kinds of ways they had homes and the way they built homes and all of those things. Very simple, right? Empty place, uh, just barren land. And I heard this preacher once speaking about how it was very scarce to find grass in Israel. Very scarce. Because it was, it's not like, you know, now you just walk out, you have a lot of grass and plants. And then it reminded me of Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Now tell me something. Ancient Israel, there is no green pastures. Uh, a shepherd had to take the sheep, you know, up a mountain where they were, where we could find a little bit of green there or really away from the city because there was nothing there. It's not like what we see now. And I remember just thinking, the Lord leads us to places where He knows what is best for us. But the journey to go till there, the sheep are going, you know, as sheep we go astray. But He knows. Right? And he knows where the food is. He knows where the grass is. And, you know, these kind of things just bring so much of, you know, revelation into us. All of this happens, this is just one example, but all of this happens through the wisdom of the Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit gives us the wisdom to understand the Scriptures. It brings insight 
in the things that we read. Right? It could be something very small, but it could be a big thing, a big understanding. Right? The other day I was <clears throat> I was reading uh, uh, it was about Elisha, right? I was reading about Elisha and Elijah. Elisha and Gehazi. I was just reading a couple of weeks back. I was just reading, I just thought to myself, imagine if Gehazi did not do what he did. Elijah, Elisha, Elisha performed eight miracles. Sorry, Elijah performed eight miracles. Elisha asked for a double portion. Elisha performed 16 miracles. Now, if, if Gehazi, he saw Neman go as a leper and he saw Neman come back as a healed man, yet he chose money. But what if Gehazi had said, to, I don't want the money, I want what Elisha has got and I want a double portion of that. Because he knows, hey, Elisha got double portion of Elijah. Now I am next in line. right? So I could have got, I was just thinking of that. You know, so sometimes we read the scripture and we just you know, we just go past it. But when the Holy Spirit ministers to us, He brings some kind of an insight, revelation, and wisdom to understand these scriptures, right? So tap into the wisdom of the Spirit. Then allow to receive material gifts. Okay, let's go here. Ensure sound doctrine. Very important. As a teacher, we should ensure sound doctrine. Let's read a couple of those verses. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. Uh, First Timothy 6, 3. Second Timothy 4, 3. We'll read all of them. Now, did we go through this? Did we finish this? We did? OK, OK. Then we have to go to women teachers, right? OK. OK, First Timothy 2, 12. Let's look at women teachers. OK, let me ask you, is it OK for women to teach? But why did Paul say, women, I do not permit you to speak? Sorry? For that church? OK, let's read First Timothy chapter 2 and verse 12. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Rather, she is to remain quiet. Mm. Titus 2, 3 and 4. It's Titus 2, 3, and 4. Older women, likewise, are to be reverent in behavior, not slanderers or slaves to much wine. They are to teach what is good and to train the young women to love their husbands and children. Mm. Now, look, look what's happening here. Here in First Timothy, Paul is saying, telling Timothy, I do not allow a woman to speak. And I think most of us know this, right? Uh, the, the context to what Paul is saying. Lucy says a comment here because of the gossip in the church. Yes. So the whole point was Paul was writing only to the church in Ephesus, saying, women, I do not allow you to preach. Because if you look back at Ephesus, there was a lot of things that were happening, women prostitution, women were taking control in those kind of places. So in this scenario, Paul says, for now, women, don't speak. If you have questions, you have anything, go back home. But what is he doing here? He's saying he's very clearly saying Titus, Titus 2, um, 3 and 4. He's saying, likewise, teach the older women to be reverent in a way. Then he, let's go to 4. Then they can train younger women to love their husbands. So he's saying, women, here he's talking to Titus, uh, Titus and saying, you train a woman so women can train other younger women. Again, if you look at the pattern of the Apostle Paul's ministry, he had many women who were in, you know, who he chose as leaders. Phoebe, Lydia, all of them were, were women in the ministry, serving, teaching, ministering to people, right? So we know the context of this. Now, of course, there are a lot of understanding a lot of different understandings there are people who say no women should not teach women should not preach uh, but it's not right right so when you and i are reading the word we try to take context take text put it into context right uh, 
That's what we did in hermeneutics. So you take a text, you try to understand why is Paul never said that to the Romans. Who was the pastors of the church in Rome? Who was leading the church in Rome? You know this. Aquila and Priscilla, right? A husband and wife. Right? So they were pastors of the church. They were leading the church in Rome. Right? So it's not like Paul is telling everywhere, women don't preach, women don't preach. There's a context, right? And I'm sure we all understand that. So wherever you go now, especially in India, in the nation of India, when you go up north, uh, you know, people may say, no, women are not allowed to pastor, or women are, should not be preaching and teaching. But what's happening is I think even in ministry, we have opened up. So over the last, I, I would say, about 15, 20 years, people are more open to this, right? People are... Their minds are changing. The same Holy Spirit that works in a man works in a woman, right? It's the same anointing, it's the same grace that, and you know, women can do more than men also. I can tell you stories. Jackie Pullinger chasing the dragon went into Hong Kong, started a powerful ministry there. Right? Uh, Jackie Pullinger, you got you got so many women that I can name, right? So it's not about the gender. But it's about the Holy Spirit speaking in and through us, right? Okay. So, any questions here? Very important to understand this. Everyone are clear on this. Women can teach, right? Women can become pastors. Women can become uh, apostles, healing evangelists, prophets, prophetess, uh, worship leaders. Everything, whatever we do, whatever it is, women have the same abilities, same. Uh, you know, God may call, God doesn't look at us differently, right? Uh, of course, there are roles that we may have to fulfill, and that, that's a whole different topic again. But uh, women can do everything that men have been called to do. Okay, next one. Develop the ability to teach well. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2. Everyone say develop. Now, the word develop means what? You, you, you grow in it. Right? To develop means grow. Example, when you're born, when, when a baby is born, the brain may be so small. What happens? As, as the brain grows, as the body grows, it begins to develop. So when a, you, know, you can't take a two-month baby and you know, give it chicken biryani. Gone. Because... <laughs> Firstly, the teeth has not developed. Secondly, the organs have not developed. Right? The, the body cannot take it. It's not developed. But does it mean that uh, uh, five years down the line, the baby can't eat, uh, the child can, can it eat biryani? Five years down the line? Can a five year old child eat biryani? Yes. Right? He can eat. But what about a five month old? No. Right? So that means what? There are, there's, a, there's a place for developing. The baby has to grow. And as the baby grows, the organs grow. Uh, uh, it builds immunity. And then eventually, the, the legs grow, become strong. They begin to walk. They begin to understand. The brain begins to develop. And then the child begins to understand, oh, this is my name. And when somebody calls me, I should answer. It begins to play, begins to, you know, all of this is development. You know, if you go to a, I used to take my little ones to the doctor, and the first thing the doctors will do is ask, what's your age? And then they have a development chart. If you go to these doctors, uh, pediatric uh, doctors, children's doctors, they have a development chart. So in two years, you should be this height, and you should be saying these many words. Three years. Ah, so they will check. Is it right? OK. That's what development is. now. The reason I'm saying this is, as teachers, as ministers of God, you and I must develop the ability to teach well. It will not come automatically. If a mother is not feeding the child and say, no, when my child becomes five years old only, I'll give biryani. Till then, you do what you want. Is there any use? The baby is not even going to live till five years if you don't feed the baby, right? So you and I must develop the ability to teach well. 
Now, some of us are gifted in it, and when we are gifted in it, it becomes easier. Right? Some of us are gifted in preaching, it becomes easier. Some of them are gifted in writing. We all have different kinds of gifts, but we can also develop ourselves in places where we are not gifted. You get what I'm saying, right? Now, for example, I may not be gifted in writing songs, but can God use me to write songs? Can I develop the gift? Yes. I can't say, hey, no, I don't have the gift. Oh, no. you can develop the gift. And now with everything that's available around us, I can develop it. I can, now, for example, another example. Uh, you know, I want to learn how to, you know, do graphics designing. Right now, I'm I'm not much into graphics, but for example, I have to learn this. Now, can I develop that gift? Can I learn it? I can. The same way, you and I are to develop the ability to teach well. Now, look at that last word. It's not develop the ability to teach. To teach. Well, read, read First Timothy chapter three and verse two. Therefore, an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife. Go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Continue. So, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospita hospitable. Able to teach. Yes. Let me read that again. Now the overseer must be above approach, the husband, but of one wife, temperament, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. So this is, I think, one of the criteria because he's talking to overseers and deacons here, right? The leaders of the church. He's telling Timothy, when you raise up leaders, when you raise up overseers and deacons, this is something you keep in mind. What? Above reproach, the husband of one but one wife, temperament, self-control, respectable, hospitable, and able to teach. Right? Let's read the other words. Second Timothy 2, verse 24. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. Again, able to teach, right? So, how do we? Some practical things. How do you? How do you think we can develop the ability to teach? How do you? How uh, in this? Share your thoughts. How do we develop the ability to teach? You have the mic with you. Oh. Those online also feel free to just unmute and share. Ha you practice, you prepare, just example in front of the mirror when nobody is there on with you and God. So you just understand and uh, you feel that confidence. Yeah. You slowly build on it. Yeah, that's good. Practice and can I say prepare and practice? Prepare and practice. Okay. What else? How do you think you can we can develop the ability to teach? Come on, some of you are already uh, teaching in, uh, in your hometowns and all. Preparing, Lucy says, preparing, listen to sermons, practice, very good, listen to sermons, okay. What else? Learn from how Jesus taught, okay. So that would mean go back to the scriptures, read and understand. Mm. So for example, you have to preach for 30 minutes. I give you a topic. And you have to preach or teach on that topic for 30 minutes. What? Okay, let me give you a topic. Um, let's take something very simple, right? Uh, okay, the mercy of God. Now you have to talk about 30 minutes, the mercy of God. What would you do? What, what, what are some of the practical things that you do? Andrew says, having personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, okay? I shall meditate upon the words. Okay, I meditate. So now I've given you a topic. So uh, about the mercy of God, how would you prepare for 30 minutes? You have to teach about it, not preach, teach. Yeah. See, preaching, we can take examples. So, you know, this is what happened. Noah went, God told Noah, you do this, you do that. All the animals went in. 
Uh, it rained and everyone, that's preaching. And finally, it came on the mountain of Ararat. And then came the rainbow, the sign of mercy and covenant. So God is a merciful God. That is preaching. But how do I teach about mercy? What, what, what can I get? When preaching, you have the option of you know giving some examples, your experiences, and okay. you can share. Teaching, you try to bring the context in that context, some reference of the Old Testament or New Testament in that particular uh, verse. For example, you're saying mercy. So what does Bible biblically talk about mercy? Mm. And you're trying to confine it only about what the Bible says. You're yeah. not trying to bring too much of your uh, thing. So the people also relate. Okay, this is what mercy is, which only the Bible is talking about, not about mm. our personal experience. Mm. No deviations. No deviations. Yeah, that's that's good. That's good. Uh, but it's also not wrong to, I'll not say not wrong, but you can put in a few examples. Uh, but always remember when we teach, uh, again, I'm just sharing from my own perspective. Try not to give give examples, but don't give very long examples. In 30 minutes teaching, don't give 10 minutes, one example, 10 minutes. It's a waste of time. So two or three minutes. And also, you need to find, count how many examples you give. Too many examples, and you'll finish the class, and everyone will only remember the examples. So for example, uh, mercy. And we're talking about mercy. Mercy of God. So first thing I'll do is I'll go to the Hebrew. What is mercy in the old Hebrew? What does it mean? Then I'll go to the Greek. Right? What is what does mercy mean in the Greek? Now, then I would I would look at context, look at some stories on what mercy is, right? And then okay, so for example, we let's take the example of Abraham, took up Isaac, went up the mountain, and God was merciful him or even Noah, whatever, whatever example you take. So you from that example, you're not talking about too much about the example, you're bringing out thoughts from that example. So what can we learn from the story of Noah? One, two, three, four, you put five points or six points and each point can have a verse. Then you can also point to the New Testament, right? And see what is mercy there? What is mercy here? Right? And you try to bring it together. Right? Jesus was merciful. Right? He, yes, he he spoke against judgment, but he was merciful to the sinners. So you you talk about mercy here, and then you you put them both together. Right? So there's a lot of preparation. It's not like we can just you know. Nowadays with AI, a lot of things are very quick. Uh, see, it's not wrong to use AI. It's good. It's, uh, but AI is not going to lead you to the Holy Spirit. Right? AI is, doesn't have the wisdom of the Spirit. AI is AI. It can give you pointers. Right? But you you got to sit and pray and ask God to minister to you through those points. Right? Because you're going to teach it. So AI said this, you can't say that in the class. AI will say 100 things. What does the Bible say? Right. So you bring out your thoughts from here. Right? So develop the ability to teach well. We must develop it. We must ask God. And then, of course, a lot of practical things, right? So, uh, so if you see my notes, you know, now this, this notes is about 10 years old. And the reason I don't, I don't change my notes. Of course, I have the updated one also in my bag, uh, but I use the ones which because I've got all my notes here. You see, all my notes are here. Uh, yeah, all marked. All are marked. Right, all my examples, everything is here, and I and I keep marking. And I, whenever I get some examples, I keep marking it. Right, and and reference scriptures. Now, all of this didn't happen by praying. Of course, I had to go back to read, get some ideas, get get to see what 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 more can I add to this. So again, teaching is an ability that we develop. Right? Now I don't want to go into the time when I first started teaching. That was uh, it was really it was not scary, but it was something that I you know I remember I could preach. The moment I started teaching in Bible college. 
many years back. I remember I came out of the first class and I, the moment I came out of the class, I knew this is completely different from preaching. Because I, I cannot afford to sell stories the whole time. No, I need to be able to teach. I realized that this ability to teach, so I need to get into the word, read a lot. A good teacher reads a lot. Yesterday I was reading about um, the life of uh, David Livingston, powerful, two volumes, Henry M. Stanley writes that I was reading about him, the life of David Livingston. Now, why, why do we read these additional things so that we can be able to bring it into context when we are teaching the word? Um, then I was also uh, looking at you know, you know the book of Hebrews, just going through the book of Hebrews, just trying to understand so much that's so much of wealth in that letter, that letter to the Hebrews, right? So we develop the ability to teach. Then we raise up teachers. Second Timothy two two. We uh, just let's read that. Second Timothy chapter two and verse two. And what you have heard from me in the presence of many witness, entrust to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Mm. What you have heard me say in the presence of many witnesses, entrust to other men who will also be qualified to teach others. Entrust it to any other men. That means what? Give people opportunities. Now, especially here, no, uh, you all get opportunities, right? There's a roster, and then you know, the in-person students, morning, somebody is rostered to lead the worship, and then you prepare, and you one person is rostered to share the word. Right? And this happens over the entire semester. And of course, we also give you opportunities to serve in different areas. Now, entrusting a person with the opportunity, right? Raise up teachers, and I... We at APC always, 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 we say this. Learn to raise up other leaders. We're not raising up replicas. That means we don't want carbon copies. All of us have our own flavor, our own taste. Right? Example, tea powder from Bangalore, tea powder from North India, or tea powder from any other country. They all, they all are tea powder. You can make tea with them, but they all will taste different. We all have our own taste. We all have our own flavor that God has given us. But we need to learn to raise up leaders, raise up teachers. Um, now, again, in this aspect, we can, we can take a horse to the water, but you cannot make it drink. That means we can take people encourage them give them opportunities and trust them with opportunities but we cannot make you drink the water only if you're thirsty you'll drink the water so our responsibility is to raise up teachers who can teach and once the opportunity is given to you it is your responsibility and my responsibility to be able to go into the world spend time develop the ability to teach you get what i'm saying now when you go back to your hometowns most of you uh, you know, your pastor will say, hey, you've just come back from Bible college. So next cell group, you, 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 you teach or you preach. Now, you should be ready to do it, right? Because you've done it here, right? And then you, you, you prepare yourself. You should be able to deliver. Now, all those other things, okay, I was nervous. All that is okay. Right? Everyone are nervous. But you get over that, right? You develop you raise up uh, teachers your your pastor your leaders may give you opportunities you take those opportunities put it to full use and raise up teachers now false teachers was a problem that was happening from the early church not from the old even before that and up to now there are false teachers second peter chapter 2 verse 1 Peter's writing about them. Two verse one. Yes. Uh, 
second peter was chapter 2 verse 1 but there were also false prophets among the people even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies even denying the lord who brought them and bring on themselves deep destruction look at this paul is writing when sorry peter is writing when thousands of years before now he is saying here there are also false prophets among you talking about the church among you just as there will be false teachers among you so he's talking about two things here false prophets which was there even in the old testament people will prophesy and then remember god tells uh, to to judah he says to judah in, in the book of ezekiel he says i never said that did i say that i will save you i, ne I never said it yet I have, my time has not yet come to save it. I didn't say it. These are false prophets. They are saying that everything is well. You know, no problem will come upon Judah. Judah is God's eyes. Uh, you know, God will protect you. No, I never, I never said that. They are saying what they want to say. So Ezekiel is saying, they are saying what they want to say. This is not what God said. False prophets. And now in the early church, Peter is writing and saying, there will come a time, there will, uh, as there is already among you, false teachers. Imagine this, false teachers, they're coming up with their own doctrines. They're saying, you know what, actually, if you see, you know, let me teach you about Christianity or let me teach you about this other religion. Let me teach you about what the, the Romans do or what, what the Greeks do. They are, sort of Paul, they are wolves in sheep's clothing they're wolves their their identity their the, the reason why they are there is completely different they look like sheep but they're wolves they teach the wrong things they say okay the uh, you know they come up paul writes to the thessalonians he says there are people who are spreading false doctrines among you saying the rapture is already over so paul again explains to them so you and I need to be very, very careful what we hear, what we listen to, what we... That's why, uh, to tell you the truth, now I'm not against anything, but this is something that I do. I try to, you know, read... I try my best not to listen to too many of the sermons that are going on right now. I, not too many. I, I listen to uh, you know some of uh, the, the APC sermons. A few of them, especially uh, that's what's happening nowadays. But most of them who I listen to are way back of the 70s, 80s, the 90s. Now I'm not saying there were no false prophets that time. There were no false. There were, but at least you know what I what I feel is that I have learned a lot from these books and reading books and. All. So now we must be very careful. Now, listen, I'm, I'm not saying don't listen to, you know, teachings that are happening now. There's a one, there are wonderful teachings that are happening now, right? Um, but we need to be careful. Whatever you hear, whatever you listen, go back to the word, right? And test it. Test it and see, is this what the word is saying? Is it true? Is it in line with the word of God? I, one thing we do at APC is whatever we preach and teach, we have it open. People can ask questions. Now, many people believe in you know pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, rapture. Right? Now we are not going and fighting with everyone. No, no, you have to believe it is pre -trib How can it be mid-tribulation? How can it be post? No, we are not doing all that. This is what we are teaching. This is what the scriptures say. This is what we believe. And this is our belief. We're going by the scripture. We're not going by our own understanding. Until the lawless one is removed, until the, the church the, is removed, the lawless one will not be revealed. So we're going by scripture. Now, we're not fighting others who don't believe in it. Right? So you and I need to... Yes, go ahead. So say it on the mic, please. I think the video has stopped. But many times, as the uh, just hold on one second. Oops. Go ahead. Teachers and 
people's profits like many times uh, somewhere we it's uh, pretty easier to identify that sometimes yes it is easy to identify but sometimes you can't identify it you can't identify it uh because they will say see let me give you this example if there is a clean glass of water to drinking water and i put one drop of uh, you know poison in it the whole water is contaminated the whole water is poisonous now but these people they may say you know especially false prophets they 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 say a lot of good things right but in between they may say things that is not true and they look like this it sounds right teachers also right they may they say 10 things out of the 10 things seven may be right three are wrong now just three are wrong but they're false it's not in line with god's word so it's not like oh so sad anyway he said seven good things no three only are wrong no what is wrong is wrong so to identify it again we need the wisdom of god now i remember there was this wonderful preacher now i'm not saying he is a false teacher sometimes it's lack of understanding also but i uh, i'll share this example and we'll close uh I, I remember this wonderful preacher that I always read, always listened to, and one of his sermons he began to preach, and he was talking about David and Jonathan, right? And he goes on in the sermon, and we know that David and Jonathan had a good, healthy relationship with each other. They were friends. Uh, they cared for each other. They loved each other. But in this sermon, uh, you know, this person is a wonderful preacher, wonderful teacher, right? But he said that, you know, actually. Jonathan didn't like David because it would be three out of the four times whenever David was hiding, only Jonathan knew where he was. So Jonathan mostly went and told Saul, his father, David is here. Now, when I heard it, I thought to myself, no, somewhere this is not right. So that's what the scriptures show us. Jonathan didn't. want david to be killed he he loved him he, he was a good friend of his but again we when we take these things we go we can just go a different direction and it's true because three oh, i think two out of three or three out of four times only jonathan knew where david is if you just go through the life of david only jonathan knew and every time jonathan knew a few chapters later david, saul is coming to attack him I just oh yeah it's true now tell me Saul is the king of Israel how long will it take to find David he can find him he can send people he had big army he had many places that he could send his people so it was not too difficult for him but when you take it and put it out of context uh again this could be lack of understanding right so now false teaching will purposefully say something that is wrong and you know there is no second coming of christ there is no holy spirit how can god be you know how can there be three gods all these things can cause uh, can really become a target for thing you know. okay so uh, next week what we'll do is we'll next class we'll go into chapter 9 I want to do the practical keys of doing the ministry of the teacher and then we'll come back to chapter 8 restoration of the ministry of the teacher. So next chap next class we'll do chapter 9. Right? All right. Any other questions? Any other thoughts? Sorry for the glitches the the wiring is all shaky a little bit here so sorry about that. Any other questions? All right. All right have a good weekend i'll see you on monday god bless you all